A big story that took place that the mainstream media mostly missed because it was very heavily focused on Biden during his inauguration was a group of Antifa in Oregon decided to attack the Democratic Party headquarters carrying many signs against Biden and against the U.S. empire in general. And, you know, with statements like, oh, we will not be governed, very typical uh, anarchist stuff like that. It was about, uh, police estimated that it was about 150 people decided to a attack the headquarters, smashing many windows, spray painting uh, anarchy logos over pictures of, of Biden posters, etc. Stuff like that. Very, uh, uh, very typical Antifa kind of uh, actions. Now, the police said that they did arrest at least eight people involved in the incident and are looking for public support in finding more of the people who perpetrated the incident. Of course, this will prove to be very difficult because they were smart enough to wear masks. Now, I don't mean to really be ragging on this, but I mean, the Capitol Hill rioters, they kind of forgot to wear masks and now they're all getting arrested. So you think back to all the times that the blank, the, um, the conspiracy theory group that starts with that letter and MAGAs in general were always attacking Antifa for wearing masks, calling them cowards, etc. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's kind of easy to say when you're on the side of the police, or at least in that situation, you actually weren't on the side of the police. You know, that's, that's why Antifa wears masks. That's why anybody with half a brain wears a mask. But, you know, aside from that point that I really wanted to stick in there, why isn't these sections of the right wing saying, well, I, I, I thought that, you know, Antifa was a paid employee of the Democratic Party and, and, and the George Soros and, and all the other conspiracy stuff. Because the fact that Antifa is against the Democratic Party, which is fairly obvious why, went completely ignored by the right wing. So they were just constantly pounding this conspiracy theory that somehow the Democrats were behind Antifa when I think uh, Antifa has uh, made it pretty clear that they will not be governed. That's, I believe that's, you know, kind of the anarchist motto there. So that would explain why, you know, they did what they did. But it's interesting, noticing that there is generally a kind of cognitive dissidence when it comes to these uh, letter conspiracy people single letter conspiracy people and the magazine in general. And they think that everything is the democratic party secretly subverting uh, the freedoms for the, the evil commie Nazis or, or whatever thing that they're claiming now, but they're kind of dead silent on this one. They're not, they're not really saying anything because you know, this kind of goes against the, the narrative. <laughs> well, disproves the narrative that they have, but they've decided that they're not really going to say anything. I'm sure eventually some person of this orientation will eventually say something and it will be something to the fact uh, of a conspiracy theory, or it was a false flag perpetrated by the democratic party to throw people off the scent. Because that cognitive dissonance is always going to be there when you're dealing with conspiracy theory people. So I'm just really kind of waiting for that. But th the news here really is that Antifa demonstrated that they were not on the side of Biden. And frankly, his legacy as a war criminal under Obama. And that Antifa certainly does stand against both parties. And in fact, I'm willing to bet that uh, Antifa in general doesn't support any party. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.